Welcome back, everybody, to another episode of Candidly with Coffee. We're back. We're back. Happy Friday. Yes, ma'am, sir, everybody. Not. Happy Friday. I hope it's a happy Friday for I know. everybody. Cheers. The weather's, uh, at least the good thing it's not raining right now. The sun's out, so yeah. that's a bonus. Cheers. I got my espresso with a dollop of whipped cream. I did coffee, and I added a shot of espresso in there. Oh, dang. Get a little Big pick guns. me up. And how yeah. many, how, is that your second cup of coffee for today? Yeah. Because I've been cutting it. Uh, this is my second, too. I've been really working on not drinking coffee in the afternoons oh. anymore, like after 12 or 1. Yeah, I do not. I refrain from caffeine after like 1 p.m. Mm -hmm. Unless I have like a late meeting or something like that, I refrain. Yeah, yeah, it just depends. Now, if I have a long day and I'm going to have to keep running, I'm like, damn, okay, then I might need it. But I try not to. I've been really cutting back. I've had such a busy week. It's like appointments after appointments. I took my sister to a doctor's appointment on Monday. Tuesday, my dad had um, dental work done. Yesterday, I had a hair appointment. Today, I have a, a funeral. So much. Ah, oh, man, funerals. Those are so emotionally draining. I so know. sad. I'm not looking Because even though it's not, might not be your family, direct family member. It's well, it's still not an somebody's, immediate family member, but it's a family member. It's somebody's family member, and they're, they're hurting, and you hurt for them because you've been through it. Yeah, and my problem it. is I'm an empath. I, and so I find that those types of things are very emotionally draining for me. Yeah, they are, of course. Very I, emotionally draining. I have draining. a friend, too. He's two friends that just lost their fathers recently. They both... What's the tough part? I was talking to one more. You know what sucks about losing like a loved one, especially suddenly? is now you got to go rush to plan their services. You're already emotionally fucked up. You know what I'm saying? And now no. you got to go deal with that. You know, and that's like, why, damn. like, with my mom, she at, was adamant that she didn't want services. But my dad does. So I've already kind of started the thought process. He wants, a big, he wants a big farewell, big he, show he for everybody. He just want a funeral. And so what we're going to kind of do, I think, is more of, like, a obviously a funeral. But, babe, what do you mean it's all a show? It, it is, is a show. It is what somebody wants. I know. It is their wishes. I know. It's not. It's a show if you make it a show, or it's, it's if a monetarily doing, expensive show. That's no, but if you're say. doing something that is, if I don't care what you say, if your mom would have said, "Me, hijo, I, I would like to have trumpets," you'd fucking found a way to have trumpets <clears> at her <throat> funeral. Am I right? Maybe I probably would have tried. Right, because if if it's their last wishes, literally, and so that's yeah. why we did what my mom wanted, which was hard for us because. It is hard. You feel like there isn't as much closure without like official funeral, whatever. Mm. You can't relate because you had a funeral for your mom. We had something very small, but it was months after. Wait, hold, on, hold on, let me correct you. We have a funeral for my mother. That babe. was a funeral. Sorry, I don't. I know didn't what... bury my mother. We cremated her. Um, Those services. Those memorial services. Yeah. Funeral and service. It's the same. Memor it's a okay. synonym. Services. Memorial mm. and funeral services. I take funeral like they're getting buried. She was fucking no. cremated. Okay, so that's oh, how I no, took that's it. Oh no, that's not. All right. But that's, that's not what it means. I didn't bury my mother. I cremated. No, but her. you had a funeral. So for her. I didn't do a funeral services to bury my mother. I had service a memorial services for her to honor her. It's, she babe, it's semantics. A funeral. Okay. It's just what what are the wishes for the funeral? It didn't cost me fifty thousand dollars at all. No, but it doesn't have to be fifty thousand. I know. I'm just saying the funerals are crooks. They're a bunch of ripoffs. Fuck them it places. It doesn't have to be that way. It is whatever you want it to be. My dad's not going to be buried. He's going to be cremated. Oh, He's she's, having a funeral. So he wants the same similar thing. It's the same thing. In fact, it's the exact same thing that he wants that your mom had, which was a viewing. And then a cremation. Mm. Isn't that what your mom had? Yes. At a funeral home? That's a funeral. Yeah. I don't know. I, I hate to break it to you. I that is take, a funeral. I always say funerals like they're getting buried. I hate going to those. That's a burial. Mm. That would be a burial. That would be a funeral that includes a burial. I go to the services, pay more respect, but the burial, burial, man, that's something different. Yeah, but it's, it's everybody has different wishes and it doesn't For have sure. to be a $50,000 show. I think that is ridiculous. Yeah, I was just like, talking to somebody want, about that. I want, crooks. I know that's why you're triggered because you're thinking like, oh, the let's, oh, cause what are people going to think? It's not about that. It's about, it is for some people, not for me. For me, it is honoring the wishes of your loved ones. And if you have the, the opportunity to know what they are, you're better off. Not everybody has that because they don't have those discussions with their loved ones. Yes. Right. right? But when you have an opportunity to know what they want, then you can give them their wishes and it makes you, you know, feel better about it. Yeah. You know what I was discussing with somebody is is 
don't they run out of plots of burying people? Where do they keep putting people? Like eventually, they I said, where's the real estate them going? At some point, I don't know. I, I, do they re you think they can't recycle them? Because if you're going to someone's plot to pay your respects, you know, someone died there, so yeah. But what about like 200 years ago? You think there's still family the ones that are abandoned for a certain period of time? I bet you they re I don't know what the rules are. I know, I'm just curious. I don't know why we were talking about that yesterday. We're like, they never, I don't know, it's weird. Like, where does it where do they go? So, yeah, anyways, we are, my dad wants a funeral, but nothing extravagant, not a show, but we are going to do something, I no, think, no joint, mm -hmm. like where we will combine their, I mean, not combine their ashes, but put them, to, lay them to rest somewhere yes. together, mm. well, you know, when that time comes, yes. but... Anyways, I don't even know how we got on that tangent, but uh, oh yeah, because can't live with coffee. no, because you were saying that it it is it's hard to have to then go into planning mode. So what I was thinking was, I'm already I know what my dad's wishes are, so I'm kind of like, you know, whatever I can do ahead of time, I will. Yeah, you know, um, so that it's not so, I don't know, traumatic. But sometimes I think it's therapeutic. It gives you something to work on right after. And then, you know, so you're not having to deal with your emotions or whatever. But it's I tough. don't know. It's tough. Death is tough. Any way you slice it, it is tough. Um, There's no manual, no playbook how to deal with this. It's, just, it's a shock. You know, when you lose the person that brought you into this world, it's tough. Yeah. And I'm feeling for two of my friends right now. They're just... You know what? We're at that age. I, I said that to you a while back. I said, unfortunately, and it's just the beginning. It's going to... It's going to come warm more, more frequently. We're at that age. And, yes. and I know that I talk about this frequently, but I want to bring it up again today. Um, so I, was, I had a really great conversation with my hairstylist yesterday about it. And we were just talking about the, the challenges of having senior parents. Yeah. And what people, you know, don't realize. And it is a true fact is that your senior parents become children. You age, you you reverse, you age in reverse. We never think about that. You're right. The whole process of life, like a natural life, like growing um growing old and then dying naturally, mm -hmm. like dying by like a through hospice where your body shuts down. Yeah. It's literally the reversal of birth, childbirth, and and babies and toddlers. Then it goes into you know so it's childbirth, baby, toddler, child, teenager, adult. Senior, senior, and then as a senior, it go. Then you revert back to teenager, child, toddler, infant, death. Because in before death, it's they become infantile, sleeping all the time. You know, can't communicate. It's literally like textbook reversal. It's crazy. And then they get stubborn at the end. You know, when you're a little kid, you're stubborn. You make life hard for them. They do it for yeah, us so in the you, end. But you have to think about... So think about them. And I challenge you, if you have seen your parents, to start thinking about, like, when it's time for you to kind of, like, involve yourself or step in. Because you think... For so many years, you think your parents are, like, you know, the decision makers. They know what they're mm -hmm. doing or whatever. But you have to understand that there is a reversal that happens. And there's a time where as their child, you have to step in and help them with things. Because yes. let me tell you, and I'm going to share a story, but senior abuse and taking advantages of seniors is a thing. When you start to feel like, feel like your parents are entering that era, it's time for you to go with them to doctor's appointments. Go with them to, you know, make decisions, financial stuff or whatever. It's important yes. because they get taken advantage of. Yes, they do. Have Sad. the conversations with <clears throat> them about... Not trusting everything they see on Facebook and a text message that says it's from a family member might not be from a family member. Mm -hmm. Like have those conversations with them because the combination of technology and senior, be, them becoming seniors and now people having access to them more frequently than maybe in the, before is a problem. Yep. But I didn't even tell you, but I'm going to give you a little backstory on what happened with my dad and his dental stuff. So last year, when my mom was still alive, my dad had some challenging stuff with his dent with his dental. Like he had a root canal that went bad. And so he went to this dentist a few times and he was having issues. I wasn't a part of it. This is just my mom and my dad at mm -hmm. this point. Mm -hmm. And I guess on this one particular appointment, they ended up having to do more than they were supposed to or than they thought they were. They took, you know, an extra tooth or I don't know the specifics on that. So I don't want to speak to the specifics. But at that appointment, apparently my dad didn't have enough cash. He's cash paid. He doesn't he's Medi-Cal, so he doesn't have dental insurance. 
he didn't have enough cash to pay for the procedure. He was short like a few hundred dollars. It was like a thousand dollars. He had like six hundred dollars or whatever. So they freaked out on him and they he was like, well, let me go home and get the rest of the cash. And they're like, oh, no, you, you can't leave. You can't leave until you pay us. They literally like both my parents were there, too, by the way. They literally like held them hostage. My dad said, listen, I will leave my wife here. You could keep my ID. Here's yes. my you could keep the cash I have. You can keep my you know driver's license. And that's what he offered first. And then he said, I'll leave my wife here. And they still said no. And they were very rude to him. It was a bad experience. He didn't tell me about this experience until my mom passed. Damn. Because when my mom passed, I was checking her voicemails and I saw like my dad had a dentist appointment. Yeah. A follow up with this dentist. And I said, hey, dad, you know, you have a dentist appointment. It was on mom's voicemail. And he goes, oh, you don't know. Those people are mm -hmm. terrible. They, they were very, you know, mean to your mother and I. And he explained it. But I took it with a grain of salt. Okay. I'm yeah. thinking... My dad was probably confused. Mm -hmm. They were, pro you know, my parents are immigrants. They were probably like mm -hmm. having a hard time understanding the dentist. So I gave the dentist a pass thinking like my parents are probably exaggerating. So I called the dentist to reschedule. I'm like, no, Debbie, you have to follow up because they weren't done with your work or whatever. Yeah. So I called them and they were rude as fuck when I called. They were really? just rude people. They were just rude people. Wow. It was a, a, so I thought, hmm, you know what? Maybe my dad was right. But my sister ended up taking him. Yeah. Long story short, this is in January. So my dad then gets diagnosed with colon cancer in May. So he never follows up and he has an abscess in that tooth that they worked on. Damn. And so I had to call back recently to figure this out. Mm -hmm. And they were rude again, like extremely rude. They gave us a referral to a root canal specialist we went to the root canal specialist. They said they couldn't help us. He had to get extractions. So they sent us back to this rude ass dentist. And I'm going to tell you who they are because I'm going to leave them the nastiest. Blast them. Good. It's a Rishna Good. Dental on McKee Road. And they have the worst bedside manner, the worst customer service ever. Say slower, babe, because I didn't even understand. A Rishna Dental or Rishna Dental on McKee Road. A Rishna Dental. Yeah. I'm going to, I haven't had a chance to like collect my thoughts, but they Blast then, them. they then, we go back to them because I'm thinking like to start over with a new dentist, we go back to them for the extractions. And so I made an appointment. They make an appointment two weeks out. They couldn't get us in any sooner. And mind you, my dad's has colon cancer. His treatment is like depending on this appointment and whatever. And they know this. Um, we make the appointment and I tell my dad, okay, dad, we have the extraction appointment. And he even says to me, oh, I really wish it could be someone else. They were very mean. You know, and I thought, Dad, let's just not start over with a whole new dentist. Let's just do this and that we'll be done with it. Mm -hmm. So the day before, which is Monday, this Monday, mm -hmm. they leave a voicemail saying, hey, we decided that we don't want to do this, this extraction because of his medical history, because of his medical file. We reviewed the report, right? And I'm like, you wait until the day before. I've waited two weeks for this appointment. I could have had this done already. So again, irritated, but they gave us a referral to another dentist. So I called and I'm trying to kill them with kindness because I need them to forward the x-rays yes. and everything to the new referral. So I did. I called and she goes, was rude again. I can't, I can't even begin to tell you. How I'm going to walk over is. there. I'm, I'm personally going to go over there. I know. Be rude so to me. So then she goes, oh, I said, okay, that's fine. I called the, the place you referred me. They got him in for tomorrow. Can you send over the record? She goes, yes, I'll. Well, she goes, did they give you a fax number? I'm like, no, they didn't give me a fax number. You referred me to the dentist. Don't you have that, you know, their information? She goes, I'll look it up. I'll figure it out. Like, rude again. Damn, um, what's with the attitude? I don't know. I have no idea. So then... You might have to go down there. I'm like, so then I get to the referral oral surgeon the next day, and they said, hey, we have your appointment here, but the dentist didn't forward us any of his paperwork mm -hmm. and we called them and they said that his daughter has the paperwork and she never brought it to them and so that's why they didn't forward it over damn Grimey. and i was like i you, let me tell you i would i yeah. i the east side janine started to come out the, the oral surgeon even said okay now calm down we'll, we'll figure this we'll out because i we'll steam yeah. was coming out of my ears at this point this was like the final straw and I said, you spoke to them and they said that? He goes, yeah. And I said, get them on the phone. They put them on the phone on speaker. And I was like, 
you guys have the paperwork. There's, mm -hmm. a, I have a voicemail that says, I can play it for you, still on my phone, Good. that says we reviewed the report. If you don't have the paperwork, what did you review? Exactly. We reviewed the report and have decided that we don't want to do this procedure. All of a sudden, the girl from the front office goes, oh, I have it. They sent it over. I'm going to say something. I'm going to go out on a limb. Any of you guys in this in, in medical or dental industry, don't be rude to people, man. Especially like people are in pain. They could be, you know, they could be a little grumpy, whatnot, but they're in pain. Like That's just I, rude. Don't be rude to older people, especially seniors. Be nice to them. I have a long fuse. You know me. I so do. if I were to blow, you know that it was, I gave them so many chances and I killed this B word on the phone with kindness every time I, she just always had such a short, just a very, you know how she reminded me her attitude was mm. like the, the vet, the vet that day. Oh. Uh. Yeah. Now, it's now the second time recently that I've been taken to this place, but it made me realize that you have to, you have to advocate for your parents. Yep. You cannot, if you have seen your parents, don't let them, like now I know, I was giving you the dentist the benefit of the doubt when mm -hmm. my dad told me the story thinking, oh gosh, you know, these two, Tweedledee and Tweedledum in the dental office probably drove them crazy. No. Now I know they were being honest yeah. and they had a bad experience. They were literally held hostage. They ended up only, my mom found her credit card and was able to charge it. They weren't going to let them go. They were going to have to call us, call like, one of us yeah. to come down there with cash. Yeah. It's ridiculous. You could have left my mom. It was just, it was so ridiculous. Um, but just remember that this is the kind of stuff that happens if you're not with them. They get taken advantage of. Mm -hmm. Who knows what kind of dental work they, per now I'm like, what did they do to his mouth? Why does he have this abscess? Exactly. Why did he need to get extractions after they worked on his teeth? Now I question everything. Now you, you know, do I need to seek legal and counsel? And listen, I don't know. I'm not going to speculate on if they did anything incorrect or what they did. or I'm not going to speculate on, anything on things I don't know for sure. But what I can tell you is they were extremely rude multiple times on the phone and liars. So to me, that's enough to do not go to this dentist. Shady. Good. Let everybody in San Jose know who I, they are. I know. I will. I'm going to go to Yelp. You know I yes. love my, my Yelp reviews. Oh, me too. I'll go off. Now, I have to say the surgeon that we went to, he get, he did the consult and then said, hey, I'll do it right now. No problem. Ha he had it done in under an hour. We were in and out under an hour. My dad got his extractions, got his medication. They were nice. They 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 helped to calm me down when I was ready to flip a gasket. Seriously. But I, just, if, I just don't, I don't, I'm, I'm, let me just speak my mind, Ken, because okay. I, I know you love your father. You love your parents like I do. And if I find out somebody's rude to my dad, like, oh, crazy, I'm going to go say something, man. You know, it's just, it's just mean. Don't be mean to older people. There's a lot of people who are mean. They're like, they're just mean to seniors. Like, don't be mean. You know what I'm saying? Like, help them out, dude. Their, their end of life is near. Yeah. Are like, they a little grumpy? Yes, sometimes. Are they a little rude? Yes, they can be. They're at end of life, though. They don't have much time left. So maybe their head is not in the right place. You got to yeah. understand that. Give them a pass. No. And if you're you know? in that field, and because I dealt with it in the in the hospital, too. Yeah, they get And here's the too. thing. So the dentists, all of them, they say the same thing. Because of COVID, only one person allowed, unless it's a minor child. So that's what it. this dentist said to the oral surgeon that we were at. Yeah. And my dad's like, oh, no, like, you're not going to be able to come in with me. I'm like, no, I am. You're a minor child. Yeah, in my minor opinion, child. exactly. It's they need to accommodate that in hospitals too. In a hospital, they say like, "Oh, I get it, COVID protocols, whatever." But they, but if you have a child, they let one parent come in. Well, my senior father is my child, mm -hmm. and so I go until they kick me out. And my mm -hmm. dad always says, "What are you going to do?" I'm like, "I'm going to go in. I'm going to go until they say something." And guess what? They didn't say anything. Yep. Sometimes you have to just act like you own the place. Remember, That's you it. taught me that. Years ago, you what taught did I me tell that you? we were, when we went to Vegas. I went to Vegas for the first time, like without you, and I wanted to still like get all the perks With of Lisa. going to the front of the line. And you're like, There's and... a long line here, babe, at this club, and I go, listen, this is what you do: walk up, find out who's the head honcho, and just work your magic. Yeah, like you're like act like you own the place. That's what you told me. Like walk up, like hey, like we're we're just, just me and her. We're just trying to get in, and and it worked. And of that was great advice that you Tra gave me. You're attractive girl, Vegas. I got to push. But right I through. use that now. I don't always just nah. take a rule at face value. You know, like even yeah. when my dad was in the hospital, or yeah. like when we went to the dentist, and my mm -hmm. dad like panicked, like, "What am I going to do? I can't hear anything. I don't even know what to tell them." 
And I was like, don't worry, dad. I'm going to act like I own the place. I'm in there until they kick me out. And if they try to kick me out, I'm going to explain to them that you are my minor child. Yeah. You're 82 years old, hard of hearing, and English is your second language. Yep. I need to be there. Mm -hmm. That's true. You know? I, was like, I got a funny story in my head, not to get off topic, but like I told you, you're walking like you own the place. Well, I used to work out at Powerhouse Gym in Daly City. Me and my boys, you know, Powerhouse was considered like all the meatheads and bodybuilders, big dudes. So me and my boy, Big Mike and Mo, to this day is my friend Salazar, one of my best friends. We used to walk in at 24 in Daly City like we own the place, like we're members. We didn't even check in. We just walked in with our big old <laughs> buff up. cells with a serious look. They didn't want to say nothing. They were intimidated. Three big ass dudes. But hold on. Did you have a membership? No. Oh. We just walked in like we own the place. We just wanted to lift there and just look like, I don't know, like assholes, I guess. Just idiots. We're in our 20s. Just being pricks. But nobody asked you. Nah, because we walked in like we own the place. That is hilarious. And no one questioned, and they just saw three big dudes. And I'm like, I'm not gonna question them. I, I swear on everything. We just walk straight. But in. that it's amazing how how well that works. It does. It does work. Let you me to give you another example of walking like you own the place with your dogs. Yes. Listen, there's a lot dogs. of places that dogs are not allowed, but walk in as if they are. Target's one of them. They're if not supposed Target to be in Target. Target is not allowed. There's now... a sign on the door that says service animals only. Target is like the dog park. Mm -hmm. There is so many dogs yep. in there, but just walk. If your dog is well behaved, yes. walk in like you own the place. Just mm -hmm. bring them with you. They don't like say nothing. they don't say anything. But if you ask, then they have to cite the rule. Yes. Just don't ask. No. Just do it. Like the mall, wherever. Yeah. A lot of those places, believe it or not, you see a lot of dogs, but there is a rule that says no dogs. So if you go up to, excuse me, sir, is there dogs allowed? The RoboCop is going to pull out his list of rules like they did to us He's one He's going to feel important. Like, oh, I got something to say something. I got somebody to say something to. Breaking the rules. Yeah. It's not a law. It's the rules. So I got to, like, they did to us one time. Super RoboCop stopped us. We had a little karma, remember? Yeah. Like, get to him, like, bro, go do like something. a 40-year-old do... virgin. Yeah, like, go do get something. Get out of here. Go check on your mom at home because yeah, I know man. you live with your mom. Yeah, and he pulled out his rule book. He couldn't find <laughs> he nothing. He couldn't the find rules. it. I told you. So get we, out of my face. No, wait. So we were like, we're going to sit here and wait for you to find the rules. We kept walking. We walked all the way down the mall and got our candles or whatever, came back, and he was still looking, <laughs> he was still looking those, at his Those kind of guys are dangerous. They get make me nervous to become cops that are just super, like, over the top, just every little, like, bro, you don't have to enforce every little rule. That's yeah, like, like come relax. on, come on. But that's a good, that's really good advice, walking like you own the place. Mm -hmm. And that's what I did, and, and it made, because my dad gets so nervous the minute he thinks that he's going to have to go in and do something you know, by himself. And it just made me realize, like, especially... If scared. He's scared. He wants company. He's scared. He's at the end of his, you know, his journey. He's scared. They're, they're, they're becoming fragile. Like you said, his mind is very fragile right now. Oh, yeah. He knows it his is. journey's You've at the end. You've got to think about it. And this is how I also... It's helped me a lot to just rethink things, process it with my brain that way. It's helped me a lot to think about him as if he were a child. Because then when you ask yourself... Could um, is he capable of doing this, that, or the other? Would you let your, you know, ten year old do that? Yeah, true. Twelve year old do that, yeah. you know. And as he progresses or gets more ill or older, the age will drop. You know, there will be a time where he will be like an infant. Mm -hmm. And would you leave your infant home alone? Would you, you know, put your infant to bed and not check on him? You know, for the next no, you don't. So you have to think about it that way. And People I think don't. If we, they don't think they about don't. it that way. No. They don't. It's weird seeing it. Though. Like, you're right. Like, born out of the womb, baby, kid, teenager, adult, midlife, like we're at, senior. And then it starts reversing again. You're right. You start mm -hmm. going down like that. No one thinks about it that way. And I feel like acceptance helps. Understanding. And that's why I talk about it. Because I'm sure I, I have a lot of followers that are, you know, you have, if your parents are still alive, you can relate to this. Yes. And it's helped me a lot. So I'm hoping it'll help you to accept where they're at mm -hmm. and accept that they're no longer that person the, from 25 the, the years strong ago. strong mom and dad. They're not and, that. No. You have amazing memories. Mm -hmm. Enjoy those memories, but stop trying to make them be that because they're not that anymore. No. They're that not. that time has passed. So now you have to accept them for who they are right now. Yeah. Like I think about my father, how I used to be so happy when he came home. He's this big he never was a big man, but just strong from work. My carpenter. Dad too. Work strong. I used to arm wrestle one of them, he beat me. There's little strong. men that are very strong. I mean he's maybe an inch or two shorter than me, maybe. Just never physically mm -hmm. physically mm -hmm. imposing guy, but just physically right. strong from working. Like you shake his hand, 
You feel it. Forearms, everything yeah, was grinding. Dad, yeah. Very strong. Mm -hmm. I'm strong in a different way because I lifted weights and I, I do the fight training, but yeah. Yeah, but what I, you know what I mean is like you just have to accept that that's different because if you keep searching for that, that person, you're going to be disappointed. Facts. You know? Facts. Our fathers, mine and yours, are not what they used to be when we were little right. kids. Right, and up so to accept they... them for who they are now and appreciate who they were. Mm -hmm. And what I found lately that is helpful um, is to get my dad to reminisce. Yes. So, so then he doesn't okay. focus on his ailments and what's happening currently. True. I'll just ask him a question about, hey, dad, tell me about such and such. Or the, it, you'd be shocked at what you don't know. Well, you're finding out a lot of stuff about yeah. your father now, which is good. Yeah, it is good. I need to go. I need to go see with my dad and ask him a bunch of questions too. Like, like I told you, I didn't even know that he had came in when he was 19. I didn't know that he came in for a little bit. And why'd you leave? Because I went back because your mother wanted to come here. So we had a plan to come back in five years. I go, that's a love story. Like he went back to Costa mm -hmm. Rica. He could have just stayed here. Mm -hmm. Went back and had the relationship. And eventually she came with him. That's crazy. Like it's so many things it took to, for me to be here talking right now. And even for I you, know, it's for crazy the way the stars align. I know. It was funny. And I told you this, but it was like a sweet moment with my dad. But I left him after, you know, his dental surgery. And I said, okay, dad, are you okay? I'll come back and check on you in a little bit. Um, and he said, thank you, you know, for the bottom of my heart to, to the, to, from the top of my heart to the bottom. And he's like, I guess it was a good idea to have a Smurf after all. Wow. Long story That's short, a Smurf story. is my nickname. My dad, that I called him Papa Smurf. He called me Smurf. I love the Smurfs. We and he recently shared the story with me that he didn't, my, he didn't want a fourth child that my mom convinced him because my sister was her only daughter and my sister was more tomboyish. She was hanging out with the boys mm -hmm. and hanging kind of more with my dad. And my mom's like, I need a girl. I need a girly girl. So I need one more. And um, they had me. That's crazy. Mom, and so mom, my was, dad, mom was on to something. So my dad said, I guess, you know, it was a good idea to have Smurf after all. Who would have thought that it would be the baby that's taking care of me? You know what I right. mean? So it was a sweet moment. And so I enjoy the sweet moments because they're not all sweet. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it's hard work. Sometimes he's a little, you know, difficult. But, yes. but uh, you know, you will. let me tell you this. Someday, even the most difficult times and the most difficult memories I'll miss. And I'm aware of that. I know. So. It's tough. It is tough. It is tough. But everybody, you know, it, you, it's a blessing to have parents that are elderly. Yes. Right. Yes. Because it is. not everybody has the we have, that. We both our both our fathers are still here. Both our mothers are gone, but both our fathers are still here. Yeah. So, anyways, moving on, um, I want to talk about some like myths or things that you know more things that people believe that are just bro crap. science. Yeah, bro science, mythbusters. Bro, bro science. Bro science. Like sayings, I grew up on bro also science. sayings that people tend to say or whatever. So. <sighs> um, I came across some Instagram posts that That's had some cool. funny things, but yeah. here's a good one. Um, Speak it. Muscle weighs more than fat. I've heard that many, many times a year. Because muscle is supposed to be more dense, correct? But but it doesn't make any sense if you think about it. A pound of muscle make any sense if you think about it. A pound of muscle is a pound of fat. It's still like a pound of feathers weighs the same as a pound of gold. A pound is a you pound. Got a good point there. <laughs> It right? just might be smaller and the fat might be bigger. Yeah. Proportion. Yes. So a pound of muscle takes up less space. So you will be smaller. Mm -hmm. But that's, that is also what explains why, like, you can weigh the same but be a much smaller person if you recomp your body. If you get rid of fat and put on muscle, mm -hmm. you can weigh exactly the same but be significantly smaller because a pound of muscle takes up less space. Uh -huh. But the term... Muscle weighs more than fat is actually very incorrect. It's super. I, now that you break it down, <laughs> it, no one questioned it. Muscle weighs more than fat. Everyone, I, people say it okay. all the time. I know. They and say we, it all and the time. we just kind of go along with it. You're right. But <laughs> muscle it weighs more than fat. It weighs the same. Weight, it's <laughs> weight relative. Is weight. weight is weight. A so this cell phone weighs the same as uh, this cup of coffee. Yeah. Or whatever. If you put them on the scale, yeah. maybe. Exactly. It a pound is a pound. It just takes a little more space, obviously. It just depends how you slice right. it. But wow. So that's common. Like people commonly say never, that. Never, never stop to even think about that. Like, wait a minute. What does that mean exactly? A muscle weighs more than fat. 
when okay. a, I think a lot of people what they're referring to is the density. like that's what I think. I take it as a density. If they're putting on muscle, they're gaining weight too. I they're was hear gaining that. weight. Yes. Well, because for it does kind of happen if you if you are exercising, I mean, yeah. it's not because you are gaining muscle at a rapid rate. It doesn't. It's your muscles not packing on by the poundage. No. Okay. No. You're lucky to put on like in a good consistent resistance training program a in a year Natural. eating the right around a macro macros like five pounds of muscle yep. i put on five pounds of muscle last year in a year of working out consistently um with that intention so a year five pounds in a year so when you're like looking at scale fluctuations over the course of two weeks and you're like oh my god i gained three pounds that must be muscle it's not muscle in the short term no but what it actually is if you are using more muscle and you are going to work out now your body's expecting you to go do these workouts it will store more glycogen in your liver because mm. it, it it needs more it knows yes. that it needs more readily available energy that makes sense so it goes oh janine's gosh she's she's being consistent in the gym we need to make sure that we have enough glycogen stored up you can it's like it could be significant, like several pounds, um, where you your body will store more glycogen. Yeah. And w glycogen is readily available energy that can be used in a pinch. Yep. Um, when your body stores body fat, that's not more readily available energy. That's kind of like saving it for a rainy day because it's not easily accessible, body fat. The body has to go through a different process. You can't quickly convert body fat into energy. If I go decide to run sprints down the street right now, my body's not going to use body fat. It's going to use the glycogen. Glycogen. Um, that is why walking for, for fat loss, they say is supposed to be the best. Well, yeah, so, you'll if you're in... It not bur not, what I mean by that is it's not burn off muscle. Exactly. That's what I want. Let me yes. explain that to people so they yes. understand that. Babe, so so it's because it doesn't mean that <clears throat> walk walking is best. So you're going to lose more fat. No. If you're in a deficit, you're in a deficit. Your body will have to dip into fat storage, period. Mm. But if you are doing too much high intensity cardio all the time, um, your body won't and you're in a deficit and you're doing the high intensity cardio. High intensity cardio requires glycogen. So your body won't dip into fat storage for that. It'll it'll actually dip into muscle, lean muscle, to quickly convert it into glycogen. Mm -hmm. So um, that's why low intensity movement is so important because that's your body's opportunity to need energy and have the time to convert fat storage yeah. in yeah. to convert fat storage for into energy because it's low impact, low mm -hmm. impact requires you know fat storage that's why it's so important to move yes to like move your body and and i need to get better for sure at, at moving other than exercise um moving my body now yeah. here's the thing a lot of people have asked me like what's my routine you know i do a lot of orange theory and people are like oh my gosh that's hit like you're doing a lot of hit you're bur burning off muscle the cool thing about orange theory is yes it is a hit style workout but you mm -hmm. do not have to have a hit workout every time you control your intensity your heart rate you i have access to my heart rate the entire time a lot of days i do more low impact days you you control your pace mm -hmm. if i want to walk on the treadmill i'll walk on the treadmill instead of run mm -hmm. have a more low impact um low intensity session. so you just you just pull back a little bit basically yeah, i can control mm -hmm. my own workout yeah so there are like you know maybe three of the days i go Red line balls to the wall, and then two of the days I take I scale way back and do more of a low intensity workout because I don't want to constantly be needing that hit style. But I do need more non exercise activity in my life. I know walking. I do walking. I need to maybe start doing an afternoon walk with you. You're you're lazy. You don't want to walk. You're a lazy chick. I'm not lazy. You're lazy, babe. You don't want to walk. I'm joking. Yeah, I know you're not lazy. I'm just busting your balls. But yeah, we could walk. It's good. I just need it for me. It's not about it's just about making it a routine. The first yeah. couple times will be hard. But once I get into a mm -hmm. routine with it, it's fun. I honestly love getting out, smelling the fresh air. It's crispy. It feels good. I'm telling you, it does, it's good for the mental. That's why I like to do it. Because in the morning when I do it, 
It's cold out there. It's crispy. I need it's to good. do the afternoons. So though. I can't do the morning. Yeah, you'll be complaining the whole way. Why? Because it's cold in the morning. You're not. You don't like the cold. It's not that I'll be complaining. I just. I, I, well, I mean, you're too busy in the morning. Anyways. I like my morning routine. I, I, I want to do an afternoon walk too because that's just more movement. And let me tell you a quick little story that I heard on Joe Rogan. He had a guest on there, a comedian. Dude had to get the lap band surgery for his stomach. He was 350 pounds, and he said the reason he got it. He goes, man. I, 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 I've i made it in life. Like I financially, I'm, I'm good. Business is, comedy is good. Everything's good. And here I am, 300 and something pounds, sloppy. And I have children I have to worry about. And it's not fair to them. So I need to do something about this. Mm -hmm. So he did something about it. Well, they told him after, after surgery, you got to walk. He said, I couldn't even walk. I walked up and down the hallway one time at the hospital. I walked. And then at home, walked up and down the stairs. Then he said, I walked up to the driveway and back. Then I walked down the block. Then before I knew it, I walked around the block. Then before I knew it, I'd do it a mile, two, three. Then eventually, the weight just peeling off, just mm -hmm. walking, walking, walking. It was all, moral of the story, what that told him, just got to move your body. People mm -hmm. don't move. They don't move. They he did one thing. He sedentary. fixed one thing, shrunk his stomach, obviously, to eat less. Or, or the lap band surgery. Right. And then the second was moving. Now the dude does jujitsu and does other weight training, another form of working out. You know what I'm saying? So right. he, he leveled up, but he started with walking very little bit. Moral of the story, you could be 400 pounds. Just get out and walk. Right. Make it a point. Okay, I can only walk a block. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you could go two blocks. Just, then three blocks. Just, so it just starts happening naturally. Listen, I do macro assessments all the time for clients. And I always tell them, even if they write to me and say they're sedentary, they just kind of say, Bling. I'm sedentary, but I want to lose weight and build muscle. <laughs> That's mm -hmm. funny when they do that. It's like a generic But I always tell them, listen, answer. move, set mm -hmm. a step goal. And I'm not mm -hmm. saying, you know, everyone says generically, walk 10,000 steps a day mm -mm. for you. That might not be, that might be moving mountains yes. because you have never walked 10,000 steps. What I want them to do, what I tell them to do, what I'm telling you guys who are listening, mm -hmm. figure out approximately how much you're averaging right now and build on that. Don't like try to move mountains right off the no. start. So if you no. right now average 5,000 steps a day, try to increase it to 5,500 steps a day. And 6,000, break down lofty, large, unattainable goals into small, attainable pieces. And before you know it, you're just, you're killing it. Yes. Break things down mm -hmm. into micro goals. That has always worked for me very, very well. And what you focus on improves. So make it a point to, you know, increase your movement, yes. increase your steps. If there's one thing, if you are able you should be doing it. I don't care. If you are able-bodied, yes. there is no reason no, that none. you cannot be making a step goal and working on improving it. And I'm not saying that you have to start crazy. Start where you are. Do what you can. Mm -hmm. But, um, you know, think about the people out there that can't. Yes. They would kill to be to be able to have the opportunity to have a step or goal. How about, or how about think those, about that? Yeah, or how about paraplegics yeah. who can't use their lower half and are ripped and shredded and compete in these bodybuilding things because they're like they don't they don't quit. They're like, you know what? I can't lose my lower body, so I use my upper body. And they right. compete. It's to show people like I, I, I'm making it work. Yeah. So you know, think about the people that can't. That I can't. literally after a workout, I take a moment, I get into my car, and I literally like pat my body. I'm like, I'm like, thank you. Thank you. Like I'm, I'm, I'm Dude. grateful for my body, my health Me too. and to be able to do what I just did to sit in this car right now, mm -hmm. sweaty, out of breath, had a great workout. Like I'm grateful. I'm able to work out. I, yes. you know, I get to work out. Yes. Not, I have to work out. Mm -hmm. Start thinking about it that way. And if you can listen, I had, I told you, I have a mentioned this before but when we first moved into this house there was a neighbor and he probably passed away now because i don't see him anymore but i would see him walk every day with an oxygen tank on wheels that's right you're Remember right him? Slow. you're right but i haven't he, seen him but he well, he probably passed away he probably did but he was walking mm -hmm. and i guarantee you because he did that he lived longer than he probably would have there's yeah. a lot of studies that prove that that's what's killing us being too sedentary yes you know unfortunately not moving so some of the other things, meal frequency is a big one. And in the day and age of intermittent fasting or OMAD or some of the people, you know, don't eat after seven, all these crazy rules. The latest studies show meal frequency when calories are equated has no impact on fat loss. That is the latest, most reputable up-to-date studies. 
So break meaning, it down. Meaning it. What, if you have a 2,000 calorie limit for the day, if you eat it in one meal or in 10 meals, it will not have any impact on your fat loss. Ah. If you eat it at 8 a.m., 2 p.m., or 10 p.m., no impact on fat loss. As long as you stay within those. As long as you, if, if calories are equated, that was the study, calories equated, meal frequency has no bearing. So then what becomes important is how do you feel best? Because think about this. Remember, food is fuel. So think about what makes sense for you and your lifestyle, how you feel best fueling your workouts. Do you feel better fueling them before your workout, after it boils down to a personal choice and routine and schedule for you because there's no ideal meal frequency for fat loss. Yeah. So the ideal one becomes what works best for you. True. True. You know, what works in your schedule. And, and you know where uh, for a long time, you might know, you might not, but for a long time, people, seven was the cutoff time. You yeah. know who made that popular? It's bullshit. You know who made that popular? Who? Oprah Winfrey. Yeah, he said, I'd stop eating at seven, like my trainer, nutritionist, and that's the last meal of my day. Then it went to eight o'clock. Yeah, it's not you true. You can't. You can't. It's all too. It's if all you're, too. If you're tracking macros, all of those ridiculous rules go out the door. Those rules are helpful when you are not tracking. And for whatever reason, people want to do everything else. Except for tracking macros. And tracking macros is what's going to work the best. True. It's going to get take it, the guesswork it, out of it and, and eliminate all the stupid-ass rules. It's because people don't want to take the time to learn. It's not that hard once you learn it. It's like having a freaking secret formula recipe to your own body, to your own vessel once you learn it. You know what I mean? Like It's real easy. Put it on a scale. I, I'm not the best at it either, but I kind of have an idea of what I can and can't eat. You know, I've been doing it for a long yeah. time, like you, but... It's very important to track. It makes a huge yeah, difference. It makes a huge difference. It makes a huge difference. Huge. I, I can't tell you how many times I have a message. I actually just had a DM from someone who's like, listen, I'll admit it. I was that person that I wanted to do everything else other than track. And I finally listened to you. And I decided to track what I was eating. And I was eating 500 to 1500 calories more See? than I thought every day people assume they, they don't it was she was like i was mind blown so i i'm like shoot i guess i do have to track why am i fighting this and then she lost six pounds <clears throat> like Hello. that it is mind blowing because she pulled how, back she figured like oh whoa i'm way off i need to you have back. to you it's like it's like ignorance is bliss yes you know and if you're you know stop fighting it you guys i promise you it's you don't have to be a slave to it no you have to do it for a period of time and you will learn a lot and about you portion learn. control. Yes, you learn you your portion learn sizes. a lot. And then you won't always have to be so meticulous with it. But stop fighting it because stop doing all the other rules. The timing, the the no carbs, the no bread, the don't eat after this time, the eating one meal a day, fasting. You don't have to do any of those other things if you track macros. None. You'll have so much more control. You know, people freedom. try to just do too much. You know what I mean? Sensory overload. Don't do too much. Yeah, do exactly. The, base, the basics. Go back to the basics. We say this in fighting all the time in training. The basics. you got to master the basics. <clears throat> Once you master the basics, then you can move on. Same thing. We Guys want to throw like spinning shit and flying knees and crazy like moves. Like, yo, bro, basics first though. Mm -hmm. kick a punch straight elbows down in you know like this technique to it yeah and like focus on one thing Same at thing. a time you know like yes. i'll have obviously if you're coming to me or if you're struggling with weight it's a lot of things that have brought you there okay almost like make a list like what's brought me here like what has what has created where i am right now and be honest you know what are your habits okay like i go Don't to starbucks lie. every day and i get a pastry mm -hmm. you know i i drink Four to six alcoholic, cal high calorie alcoholic beverages a week. I like list out all of the vices that you have. I'm sedentary. I'm, I don't drink water or whatever. Make a list and then pick one thing at a time that you're going to improve upon. You know, start with one thing. Oh, I'm sedentary. Okay. I'm going to make a step. Goal. Nighttime snacking. Or I am going to reduce my alcohol intake. I'm going to limit myself to two drinks a week and I'm going to make them lower calorie. You know, 
don't have to do everything. I think somebody thinks that the minute they want to, you know, and I mentioned this to my clients yesterday, and I love this term, you know, you're on a journey. Think about it as like you're on a journey. You can do different things, stop at different sightseeing places on your journey. You don't have to do it all at once. You know, you don't have to visit all the countries all at once, right? Mm -hmm. You're on a journey. Yeah. So every, you know, you'll have different eras of that journey. Right yeah. now, your era is you're finally trying to stop being sedentary. Or now you're going to focus a little more on nutrition. You're going to stop eating out. You can do little things, but make a list of what your vices are because everybody has different ones. Yep. You know, if you're somebody that has the high calorie coffees, figure out like how much, how many calories a day are you consuming in liquid calories? Yeah. Those Starbucks drinks, those the liquid coffees or, you know, those fancy, I don't ever get them. All those blended drinks, 500 calories on the yeah. minimum, tons of sugar. And let me tell you, I know people are doing that a lot. Because every time I go to a Starbucks, lot. I see somebody come out of Starbucks with a drink holder. Like they're getting drinks for the office or something. Yeah. And they are all of the like whipped cream, yep. frappuccino, chocolate syrup. Yep. So a lot of people are doing it. Liquid. And then I realize, I think they drink it and then I realize I'm like, oh, I'm just, just liquid calories. This isn't sticking to my bones. Like, yes, it is. It's calories are still calories. Whether yeah, it's liquid like or I solids. think that the maybe the perception is is um, different. Starbucks is getting people fatter too without them trying because it, it really is a coffee shop. Coffee doesn't make you fat. I know, but you start yeah. adding all this other stuff to it, and syrups, a pastry, and, and you're out here a thousand calories in. I used to do. I was one of those guys. I did pastries every day. I stopped. Yeah, you used that to years do a uh, cheese Danish every day. Every day, I stopped that years ago. And it, it's so not satiating. It's, no. you know, once in a while. It tastes good, but it does not, nothing for the feeling. I'd rather get egg bites, protein. Yeah, like I am just, when you are a macro person and you can eat anything you want, truly, truly anything you want, um, you become a little more careful with your spend. And you're like, huh, 400 calories for that? I could have an in and out an in and out burger for 400 calories. Yeah. Like I'm not gonna that I rather have something that's gonna be a little more bang for my buck. Breakfast burrito. You just become a little more <clears throat> careful with the spend. That's why macro tracking is so amazing. Um, okay, what were some other ones? Oh, another popular one. I think we've covered it before, but fasted cardio. Again, I hear most, that a lot. The most recent studies, fasted cardio has no no benefit other than you know your calorie burn so I, you so you're bursting my bubble because i killed myself for almost three years getting up at 4 45 a.m to go to the machine when i was on vacation and i got lean and ripped and i thought well, it was fasted cardio it's not working. because a fasted has any additional benefits I, I was watching my calories. but you got to understand weight loss is very behavioral so that's a good behavior that's a good behavior to have to get up before you do anything else and get your cardio done and it's going to set you on the right path for the day to have a good day. Like, you know, you started your day with cardio. You're going to be on track with your macros. You're feeling motivated. Mm -hmm. It's a behavioral advantage, mm -hmm. but there's no fat loss advantage. If you do an hour of cardio fasted in the morning or an hour of cardio after lunch or an hour of cardio in the evening, same benefit. No benefit for fat loss. Now, I my argument is there are behavioral advantages to starting the day off with a workout. Also... There's less likelihood that it's going to not happen. If you get it done before anyone even wakes up because it says, hey, I need you to do this or that. Or now we have an emergency meeting or whatever. No one can take it away from you. It's done. It's in the books. That's the beautiful thing about getting up and knocking it out. But if you are going to do it at lunch and then all of a sudden you get something, you, you get stuck at work. So mm -hmm. now the lunch, now you're going to do it after work and you get stuck in traffic. Now it didn't happen for the day. So Tired, be, you're hungry. Yeah. All that goes out the window. So behaviorally. It's, it helps, right? But there's no actual advantage to fasted cardio. That is the latest and greatest. Mm. Um, here's another one you just that I... some people's feelings. Like, I know. Damn it. That's okay, though. It's, you said, regardless, it's still good. Whether you do it fasted or you do a little something, getting up in the morning and knocking it out is a good thing. And it's here's the thing, you guys. Good habits. I know we hear a lot of stuff all the time. I always like to look at look up studies in the source when I read something. I do not just take it for face value. Mm -hmm. But here's the thing. Things change. Research changes. New studies come out. We're advancing. If you are listening to somebody who has not changed their position on anything at all, ever, you know, or like for the last five years ago, they're saying the same thing that they're saying today. 
run for the hills. Yeah. And we're going to keep evolving and finding yeah, out more and more. remember that. We're, we're advancing fast right now as a human race and species. Right now, we're advancing quicker than ever in life. So Wait. remember that. Don't get so stuck in because you heard something five years ago. Don't get so stuck on it. Exactly. We've evolved. We have new information. We have new data. Use the latest and greatest data and don't get so like attached to a notion because things change. And I, you know, I've evolved. My message has evolved over time. Yes. Um, but one thing I've always been careful of is I like, I don't like, especially right now and especially over the last three to four years, I've positioned myself in a, in a position where I am evolving. I'm constantly using the latest and greatest techniques and tips for my clients to reach their goals. Rather than being stuck in my ways and stubborn, I'm open to new information, new ideas. I'm not pigeonholed. I'm not like a carnivore specialist or, yeah, you know, yeah. a, a paleo specialist mm -hmm. or whatever. I am just Janine, a weight loss coach. Whatever is the latest and greatest in the recent studies and the recent information, that is what I'm going to use to help my clients reach their goals. So I think people get attached to things sometimes. They do. And I mean, I was a personal trainer and I come from this space and a lot of trainers out there think they know it all or they're this or they're that. Hey, you probably do know a lot. We all know a lot. But again, like you said, don't be stuck. Don't You, you got to be progressive in life. You mm -hmm. always got to think ahead. Everything is always evolving and changing. Any yeah, industry. nothing. Think about anything. Think about your TV from five years ago. Your phone from five years ago yeah. looked different. Yeah. Your computer, everything. Things that are innovative will keep changing. Mm -hmm. So if you're... Five years ago, we barely had electric cars on the road. Look at now. What right. are we saying? So, the Tesla's so everywhere now. Think about that. You're, the message should shift. Um, it doesn't mean that you were wrong before. It just means that... That was the best data at the time that was out, you know? Yes. And so just keep in mind that, you know, that's why maybe you heard this at one point, but now data has changed. And so now we're thinking something differently. But another study that um, I was reading, and this was a, a post I saw on Instagram, so I went and read, like, the study behind it, is um, there's been a speculation on, oh, LDL cholesterol or cholesterol is not that imperative. It's not... Um, connected to cardiovascular disease or whatever. But the recent latest and greatest studies do show that LDL does impact and does increase your chances and is directly correlated to, you know, cardiovascular disease. So it is important to monitor your cholesterol levels. Now, HDL, no. So it's still, you know, HDL is not connected, but LDL cholesterol is. So it is important. That was something that was an interesting tidbit Um that I read mm. it, it it's wow. cardio yeah cardiovascular your your LDL um is directly connected to your cardiovascular disease if you have high LDL so that is something that because in the keto space for the longest time and I'll admit I was part of that world where I read all the research at that time where people were trying to say like oh it doesn't matter and it's not you know, correlated, blah, blah, blah. But current research is showing that it does. So, but you can be on a keto diet without having poor cholesterol numbers, but dirty keto is leading to people with like some high LDL because they're eating high saturated fats and high, Yes. Um, you know what I mean? You don't have to, you can, you can do a cleaner version of keto and not impact your cholesterol and i should say some people are just prone to high cholesterol genetically i did my blood work when i was on keto didn't i yeah and it came back yours is fine mine was yeah really and your great. cholesterol is good my cholesterol is actually a little higher than yours both of ours were good numbers mm -hmm. but yours was actually better than mine wow um so but it's important so it is important and for the longest time and a lot of like keto gurus and stuff will say that it doesn't matter. And I may have said that at, at a time, but again, like I said, it's important to evolve, read the research and be willing to say, Hey, things are changing. Now I'm, I, you change your position. It's okay. And you got to be also with keto. That diet's not for everybody. Everybody thinks oh, I can do it. No, it has mm -hmm. affected people and it has 
from what I understand, it has affected some people's hearts. But I don't, well, I'm not a doctor. I don't thing. know how true that if is. If you are prone to high cholesterol and like you start keto and your numbers go crazy and you go on like a clean keto and you cannot regulate it, then that diet's not for you. Mm -hmm. Everybody is genetically more predisposed to certain things. So it's yep. important to monitor your blood work and see how you do. Monitor your liver function. You know, some people have issues with, or your gallbladder. Some people cannot consume high fats genetically they have issues with their gallbladder and high fats are an issue so not every diet is good for everybody and i think that it's important True. to remember that you know even like high protein maybe a high protein diet for somebody with maybe a kidney malfunction or dysfunction or whatever you know maybe they're they're limited to the amount of protein they can consume or you know we have a friend who cannot eat red meat Period. Yes. No red meat. Zero. There is a severe Zilch. medical response. He gets gout with mm. red meat. Yeah. So, Bad. you know, carnivore wouldn't be ideal for him. So mm -hmm. it's important to know that, like, not every nutrition style is good for everybody. Yes. And that's why I've positioned myself, and I'm a weight loss coach, and that looks different for everybody. Some people, their issues are more behavioral. Some people, they're more just, they just need to track their macros. Some people need to be on a specific nutrition protocol. Everybody is different. Um, but it's important to, it's okay to evolve. Mm -hmm. Right? Exactly. You got to evolve. You have to. You got to keep up with the times and get left behind. Yeah. I always like, say that too, because like, we're getting older and I'm like, damn, I don't want to get left behind. I try to keep up with the times. I you know? know. And that's, you know, I spend a lot of my time listening to podcasts and reading things because I have a responsibility to stay, you know, up, up on the times. Another one, and I'll leave you guys with this as a final one, is that sugar is not inherently more fattening than any other calorie. So when calories are equated, sugar doesn't get stored as fat easier than rice or protein. It's sugar. Sugar. It has no it has no additional fattening component when calories are equated. The mm. only thing about sugar is just it's easy to overeat because yes. it's delicious you can kill a bowl of ice cream several bowls easily it's delicious and it's not very satiating mm -hmm. it's a very rapid sugar Sometimes digests rapidly so it's a fast digesting carbohydrate basically and because it's fast digesting you know it's you're hungry again very quickly Quick. and so it's very easy to overeat sugar and that's why it got it's gotten a bad rap but it's not um it's not any more fattening than anything else. So don't, you don't need to vilify the sugar. You can have, you can have sugar. When your calories are controlled, and this is why I go back to macros again, you guys. If you're willing to do that self-monitoring and your calories are controlled and you're getting your protein in, you can have sugar. You don't have to be like, oh my gosh, don't this has sugar in it. Yeah. You can absolutely have sugar. And there are tricks to make it more satiating, you know, um, just, you know, include fiber in your diet, include protein when you're eating sugar, include mm -hmm. other macronutrients, and it'll balance out that blood sugar response. But sugar's not the villain. It's not, it's not fattening. And the funny thing is, is people will, like, something sugary is like, let's say, a big muffin. It's like 500 calories. And people, you know, like, and it's mm -hmm. got like a sugar glaze on it or whatever. People yeah. are like, oh my God, this, it's sugary. That's why it's so fattening. No, it's actually loaded with fat. It's mm -hmm. also loaded with sugar. It's loaded with calories. Butter. Everything, right? So it's it's fattening. It's it's sugary. It's all the things. It's not just sugar. The, there's not only calories from sugar in it. It's a 500-calorie muffin. So it's yeah. the 500 calories that's not very satiating. So it's not a very good spend of your macros because you could go have, like I said, a burger and a and fries, for like 600 calories, that's going to fill you up for several hours. That muffin's going to fill you up for 20 minutes. So it's just a bad spend. If that. But it's not, um, it's not inherently more fattening. It's just the calories. All right, you guys. Thank you so much um, for tuning in. We love you guys. We love really appreciate. Thank you for listening. Joining. Following. Please having leave coffee. A, please leave, a, what is it, comments, remarks? <laughs> A review. Review. There you go. Leave a review, Leave a review on please. iTunes. We really do appreciate that. And we will see you guys on Monday. See ya.